I recently started to do some pen testing and hacking challenges and therefore I've spent some time to set up my environment properly. So in this video I'm going to show you how to easily install Kali Linux in a Windows subsystem for Linux, how to install all the cool and nice hacking tools and set up a graphical user interface you can use within your Windows 10 operating system. Hi, my name is Christian and I make tutorials and content for IT professionals. I also stream a lot on YouTube and Twitch where I sometimes do some live hacking challenges or coding challenges. So if you have any questions for me, just jump into my live streams. It's always a lot of fun. So if you're not familiar already with Kali Linux or the Windows subsystem for Linux, Kali Linux is a Linux distribution that is made for pen testing, security researching or hacking. And the Windows subsystem for Linux is a very easy and straightforward way to run any Linux distribution in your Windows 10 operating system by using a very small and efficient virtual machine. So that also allows you to install any hacking tools within your Windows 10 operating system and also to have a graphical user interface running on your Linux distro that you can just easily integrate in your normal Windows 10 desktop. And for me personally, this is the best and easiest way to quickly set up a nice and awesome hacking environment with Kali Linux within my favorite desktop operating system and that is Windows. So let's start with that. And as always, you don't need to remember any links or commands I'm using in this tutorial. Just have a look at the video description below. They will find a link to my written blog article where you can just read the full tutorial and just copy and paste any links or commands I'm going to use in this video. So let's start. So to install Windows Subsystem for Linux on Windows 10, you just need to click on Start and search for Turn Windows Features On or Off. Then it will open a window where you need to select two different modules. The first one is the Windows subsystem for Linux, of course, and the second is the virtual machine platform. So this is needed for the Windows subsystem for Linux in version 2. And then Windows will install these tools and it automatically wants to restart your computer. Once you've done that, you simply just can open a command prompt and enter the command WSL double dash set dash default dash version 2. So this will automatically set the default WSL version 2 because there are two different versions that are a bit different from each other. So note you always want to have the version 2. So then you can simply just go to the homepage and search for the WSL2 kernel modules. Then you need to download this package and simply just install it. This won't take you long. And after you have done that, you can simply just go to the Microsoft store and search for Kali Linux. And then you will find an app you can easily just click and install. And after you've done that, you can just click on launch. It will automatically open a console window where you need to set up your credentials for your Windows subsystem for Linux. And you can also enter the command or create the file hash login. So this will prevent the default message that is always shown up when you first open the console. So installing Kali Linux in Windows subsystem for Linux is pretty easy and straightforward as you have just seen. So to make this look a bit nicer or work more efficiently, you should not use the default console window that just comes with the default application you install. Instead, you should use a tool that is called the Microsoft Windows Terminal. And this is a nice open source project. I've recently made a video how to make your Windows subsystem for Linux terminal just awesome with the Windows Terminal and some custom templates and custom themes. So you can just check out my video. I've recently done that with the Ubuntu distro, but it just works the same with the Kali Linux as well. You will also find the links to my color scheme on my GitHub homepage. So if you're interested in using the same look and feel and the same fonts like I do on this video, just have a look at my GitHub page and just download the color schemes for the Windows Terminal settings. So Windows Terminal also offers you some nice features about different tabs and different windows. You can open many different command prompts with that and manage that easily. Also, it supports some nice hotkeys, so you can easily work productively on that Windows Terminal. Terminal, but you still sometimes need some graphical programs on your Kali Linux. For example, if you want to use a tool like Wireshark or a tool like Burp Suite, you usually want to have a graphical user interface for these tools. And of course, you also need to install all these hacking tools because the default Kali Linux installation in Windows Subsystem for Linux doesn't come with any of these. So let's first install the graphical user interface and that can be easily done by installing a nice extension that is called Kex. So that will automatically install some shell scripts and sh uh, some 
tools to easily integrate Kali Linux desktop within the Windows subsystem for Linux. So let's do that and after that we also want to install all the cool and nice pen testing tools. So first you should always do a sudo apt update to update all your package sources and after that also do a full dist upgrade. So that will automatically download the newest packages and install them. So that may take some time and after you've done that you can easily install the Kali Linux Kex extension by installing the sudo apt install kali-win-kex. So that may take some time because it installs usually hundreds of different tools. And after you have done that, you can install all the Kali Linux tools by installing the sudo apt install kali-linux-large. So that may also take some time because it installs hundreds of hacking and pen testing tools. Note there are different commands as well. So for example, you can also use the headless mode if you don't want to install any graphical programs. But for me personally, I just like to go with a full and large tool set because then I can just choose whatever I want to use. During the installation, Kali Linux will also ask you for some things. So for example, if you want to modify the smb.conf to use the Wins settings from DHCP, so just have a look at the documentation if you want to do that or if you want to use that. I usually just select no. And after that, you can also add some other customization. For example, if you always want to change the MAC address automatically whenever you attach an ethernet cable, I don't want to do that in my environment. The next setting is for Kismet. So if you want to use that tool with users that are not in the Kismet group, or you want to capture packets with non-administrative users, you should select yes. Or you'll just simply add users to the Kismet group if you want to give them privileges. This is also pretty important for Wireshark here. So if you want non-administrative users to be able to capture any packages with Wireshark, you should select yes. And I usually do that because I use Wireshark a lot when I want to do some networking research. And I don't want to run this program with sudo privileges all the time. So this would also require you to run the Kex extension with a sudo permission. So you should select yes in this case. And for the SSLH configuration, I usually just select standalone like this is recommended. So this will now take some time because I said it installs many, many different tools and many different packages. So you need to wait a few minutes until all these packages have been installed. You can just run the graphical user interface with a kex command. You can just enter in the WSL2 Kali Linux terminal. So let's first enter the kex with a double dash help to see which different modes there are supported and which different commands you can use to run this shell script. So there are three different modes how you can run the Kex desktop. So the first mode is the ESM mode, which launches the desktop in a dedicated window using the Windows native RDP connection. You also have the seamless mode, which will integrate Kex directly into your Windows desktop. And for me personally, this is really, really awesome because I don't actually like to tap around those different desktops because I also want to use some notes tools or other things on my Windows 10 desktop, but at the same time also want to work on some of the pen testing and hacking tools. And the last mode actually, this will launch the desktop in a dedicated window and the client will run with a VNC client. So let's first try out the VNC client, which is the default operation method. So you can just enter the command kex with a dash s, so that will also enable the sound support. So first you need to set up a password and verify that and then you can decide if you want like to enter a view only password. In my case I don't want to do that because it, for me personally it doesn't make any sense. And if you run this command it should wait a few seconds and then you should see a VNC client that opens a window. So in my case this always happens to new installations. I am always presented this error message here. So unable to contact the settings server, fail to execute child process dboss launch permission denied. So I just fixed this stupid error by just installing another package and killing the Kex extension and stopping the Kex server and just simply run it again. The package I've installed is the sudo apt install dboss x11. I actually don't know if this is always necessary, but in my case it was to run this properly and I also needed to stop the Kex server and then I can simply just rerun the kex with a command kex-s and once you've done that you should see the desktop of Kali Linux. So now in my case I had a problem because I'm using two monitors the VNC client always starts in full screen using both monitors but you can easily change that by enter the F8 key and then a menu opens where you can just exit the full screen mode 
and you can also change some of the connection options and disable the full screen modes over all monitors then you only have the full screen mode on one monitor. You can also move the window around if you want to move it to your second monitor and then enter the full screen mode again. Then you have limited the full screen mode to just one monitor if you have two or three monitors around. And then you can see it just opens a default Kali Linux desktop just if you would install this on a physical or on a virtual machine. You can also open all the tools, you can also open a web browser and just use a file browser and just start with your pen testing or security research. Let's also have a look at the ESM mode by executing kex double dash ESM dash S for the sound support and this will automatically run the remote desktop connection. In my case this was a bit more performant because it uses RDPX which is a bit better than the VNC client in my case but it's up to you what you want to use. It also doesn't use this stupid multi-monitor in full screen mode so this actually was limited to one monitor. It's up to you what works best for you. Let's also have a look at the third mode. So this is my favorite mode. This is a seamless mode and we can enter this by using the kex double dash sl dash s for the sound support mode. So don't worry, it will take a few seconds until this starts and you always have this terminal window in the front. So if you enter the control C, you're disabling the kex seamless mode and it simply just shuts down the virtual desktop. So you should leave this window open. Because I have two monitors, the panel always shows up on top, but you can easily customize the panels. For example, I moved it down, but you can also hide this panel. So if you move the mouse over the panel, it will automatically show, but also hide if you don't need that. So in my case, this was a less distracting mode for this panel and it actually works pretty well because I can just use my Windows 10 desktop as usual. But if I want to run any Kali Linux tools, I can just drag my cursor on the bottom left corner of the screen and then it automatically opens the Kali Linux panel where I can just run any programs like Wireshark or I can just run anything else. So in my case the seamless mode works pretty well after some customizations with multiple monitors. But I'm really interested in what do you think is the best workflow. So are you using the new seamless mode or are you still using the normal RDP connection or the VNC client? So what do you prefer? And if you enjoyed this video, if this was helpful to you, then please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more tutorials for IT professionals. And a quick reminder, I am always doing some live coding and hacking challenges on my Twitch stream every Wednesday and Thursday. So if you have any questions or you just want to continue the discussion with me about this, jump into the live streams. It's always a lot of fun. And before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to all my supporters on Patreon, especially Mason, who is the producer of the show. And if you want to support my mission to help as many people as possible to jump in the field of IT and become IT professionals, then just support me on Patreon. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this was helpful to you. So thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourself and I see you soon.